Good morning, I'm Clinton Griffiths. The 2023 Pro Farmer Crop Tour is underway and scouts are getting ready to head out on day two of the tour. Coverage of the 2023 Pro Farmer Crop Tour is brought to you by Pioneer. Pioneer combines cutting edge research with one of the largest local testing programs in the industry to help farmers succeed. Pioneer, what's next happens here. In the east, scouts are finishing up Indiana on their way to Bloomington, Illinois, while in the west, they will spend their entire day in Nebraska. But on day one, big things were expected on the western leg and in South Dakota, an area that this time last year was more than 36% covered in drought. This year, just 14% and very little drought in the severe and extreme categories. Ag Day's Michelle Rook is covering the western leg of the tour. Michelle, so far, so good. Despite some variability, crop scouts on the western leg of the Pro Farmer Crop Tour here in South Dakota are finding a much better crop than they did in 2022, where this area was mostly ravaged by drought. Scout Sherman Newland says the moisture situation is nearly 180 degrees different on his route in the southeast versus 2022. This is a lot better than last year. Last year was a complete drought, hit hard area, you know, very low yields and, and everything. But this year, the South Dakota, this part has been catching a lot of rain. However, there is variability and for some rains didn't start until the end of July. Corn, I think some of the rains may have been too late. It might help test weight, but you know, the ear length tip is already set, the round is already set, and so I don't know how much it will help the corn. But the field's Newland survey didn't show any pollination problems. No tip back here yet, no. No, ears are, as you can see, these are pretty long. Their average on eight stops was 180.7 bushels. That's 10 bushels below 2021 when the state had a record yield. Newland cautions that corn was a late milk to early dough, so yield could be cut by this week's heat. The dryness, you know, coming up could shrink the grain depth a little bit and affect it some. The late July, early August rains in the state are evident in the soybeans, which are green and looking much better than in 2022. But our high counts are really strong. Um, it's, it's definitely above what we would normally see in the state here. Pest pressure has also been light except for some pockets with grasshopper feeding. But even then, she thinks USDA's 42 bushel per acre average may be conservative. Based on what we see here, I mean, if I continue to find some of those bigger pod counts here, I don't know, I, I think that we could see potentially a little higher in South Dakota, just given that that, that uh, yield estimate from USDA right now is so close to the past years. But again, that's dependent on weather this week and the rest of the season. In South Dakota, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Day. All right, thanks, Michelle. And a reminder about what USDA was expecting when it comes to yields. The August Farmer Survey is predicting a national corn yield of 175.1 for South Dakota. Expectations are for 145 bushels to the acre, an increase of 9.8% over last year. For soybeans, 50.9 bushels to the acre nationally, and another big increase for South Dakota at 42 bushels an acre. That's up 10.5% compared to 2022. USDA currently has Ohio pegged at a statewide corn yield of 191 bushels per acre. Now, if that holds true, that will be a 4% better than last year. Drought, not an issue this year in the state. Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan joins us now. And Tyne, are scouts seeing a better Ohio crop than they saw in 2022? Well, I'd say they definitely are, Clinton. In fact, Ohio may be home to some of the better growing conditions in the Midwest this year. This week, heat definitely hitting headlines. But here in central Ohio, the temperatures are only forecast to top 90 degrees just one day. And farmers here tell me that growing degree units may actually be behind average so far this year. And I'm going to stretch this out. Uh huh. Field by field. Because of the moisture, they're going to end up with a pretty decent corn crop, it looks like, out of this field. Ear by ear. Pretty decent ears, um, just lack some length. Day one of Pro Farmer Crop Tour produced some surprises. Just a little bit of uh, kernel tip back there. But overall, scouts saw a more consistent crop than they did last year in Ohio. Good solid uh, corn crop, especially for the state. Uh, Ohio's typically a, a hit or miss state, and, and it looks like most of the area is hit this year uh, based on what we've seen. Pro Farmers Brian Grady says the variability is still popping up in some fields, especially when sampling corn compared to soybeans. We actually had our highest pod count on soybeans on the poorest cornfield, and those two fields uh, side by side uh, obviously had the same weather. Um, so it, it shows you that what's good for corn isn't always good for soybeans or vice versa. 
Ohio farmer Josh Yoder says it started this spring when they finished planting the earliest they ever had. Well, we had a uh, nice window to get soybeans um, planted early. May and June were dry, but in July, it finally started to rain. And once it did, the corn and soybean crops in Ohio really started to take off. I think overall, I think it's going to be a, a better crop than we had last year uh, in particular. I don't know if it's going to be as good of a crop as what we had in 2021. Um, but uh, we're set up to um, to have a, a, an above average crop. Last year, soybean yields ranged anywhere from 40 to 80 bushels per acre in his area. So I think we're going to see more consistency um, out of bushels this, this year, which I think will be mean um, higher averages overall. He says the moisture is there for the crop to finish strong, but doubts are still being cast on the impacts of the early season dry weather. Uh, we've seen some... Uh, um, potassium deficiency flash um, on on our hillsides um, when it was when it was dry early. Looking at the crop now, it looks like we're going to have a pretty good harvest. Um, my question is really what what kind of damage um, occurred early. Clint, with the potential for such a good crop here in Ohio, that means farmers are sparing no expense on inputs, including just applying fungicide a couple weeks ago in order to protect their yield. Reporting for Ag Day from the Eastern Lake of Pro Farmer Crop Tour, I'm Tyne Morgan.